Welcome to the Miserable Retail Slave Show. I'm coming to you from the pod check outside beautiful Flint, Michigan, USA. My name is Randy. Welcome to the show. If this is your first time listening, this is a big dumb comedy show and we thank you for tuning in. However, this is the second part of the episode we released earlier this week. Uh, Tommy and I went on a road trip and we recorded lots and lots of audio. So if you haven't already, go back, listen to part one. It's kind of fun. Uh, Coming your way is part two, live on the road. So you might hear some car noises. And there's only one thing, really, because usually we do these cold opens, you see. There's only one thing left to say, and that's drop that beat, D-boy. Put it in, put it in, put it in. We're drinking some of Shandy on Thursday. We so motherfucking out here, though. We never been this out here. Well, I've been working like a working man do. Got my act together, gonna walk all over you. Pressure pushing down on me, pushing down on you. Shit, let's raise the roof. Woo! About time, it's the era of the rebels. Cloud nine in the era of the vessels. Generation fearless, got a taste for weirdness. Flow on fire, that's the way my beard is. Hard times, jump start the grind. It's all good, y'all. Things fall apart sometimes. Let it go, let me know when you're ready, though. Don't push me, cuz until the edge I'm close. When the time comes, ride for something. Or live to be nine and then just die for nothing. Speak their heart, your baby, speak their mind. And I'ma play their part, and I'ma freak that rhyme one time for you. Rhyme one time for you. I'm an island, man. There ain't nothing else by me, man. And I drink enough whiskey to float a battleship around this bitch any motherfucking how. Welcome back to the sausage. How's everybody doing? Do us a great big huge fucking favor. Go to that Facebook.com. Join our Facebook group. We've got some new members and we love that. So that's fun. And if you like what you're listening to, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> you're very morning radio DJ. I'm a very morning radio DJ. We're going to have a contest to win a pair of tickets to the county fair next. No. <laughs> Anyways. Jasmine, you're caller number nine. Yeah. Call in with the, your favorite flavor of toothpaste, and you might win a <laughs> gift certificate to toothpaste Dorama. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and if you like what you're listening to, go ahead, tell a friend to listen. That's the best thing you could possibly do. We're trying to climb up those iTunes charts, Apple Podcast charts, if you will, even higher, 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 and higher. <laughs> I was, I was going to go for Jackie Wilson. Your love keeps lifting me higher. Okay. Because I'm an old soul. You are an old soul living in a fishbowl <laughs> year after year. Sure. What we do on this podcast is quote songs that yeah. you may not get the references to, and that's cool, too. Some of them don't even make sense. Some of them don't make a lick of sense, and nor should they. Yeah. This is abstract art. <laughs> we're, we're artists painting a portrait with our dumb words. Yeah. And it's watercolor, so all the words blend together and bleed together. You're not sure what's quite going on. Right. But you just got to look back from afar and maybe appreciate. Sure. Also, if you're on all the medias of socials, go ahead and search the hashtag Miserable Retail Slave on Instagram. Follow me there and on Twitter at MRetailSlave. That would be cool. But we thank you for listening. It's great. Tommy, this is a segment we haven't done in a bit. It's called... Is it offensive or no? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. A man walks up to two women, Tommy. Uh-huh. Is it offensive or no? <laughs> Sounds like it. 
Imagine, if you will, imagine, if you will, dear, you're listening. Jesus Christ. Imagine, if you will. Imagine, if you will, dear listener, that the man in question is an awkward, scraggly mess. This, God help me, is a true story. Oh, boy. This awkward, scraggly mess walks up to two women. I would say they are in the 20 year old range. Now, you saw this happen? I saw it with my own two peepers. Okay. In a public place. Uh, in a public place, yes, sir. I'm not... Although, soon I will have a, a fleet of drones spying on everyone, so I have more material. <laughs> but this I witnessed with my own two blue eyes. And it, it, this man walks up to two Asian women. Uh-huh. Is it okay to say that? Yeah. One of them was wearing a shirt that said Japan on it. Uh-huh. This man, without any prompting... No warning walks up to these two women and says, Hey, what's your favorite anime? <laughs> Offensive or no? I stupid. <laughs> stupid. I mean, I don't know. Did they answer? Uh they were very nervous about answering and they looked at each other as if, huh? Yeah. What a weird thing. <laughs> at least he said anime. He did know? say anime. Yeah. <laughs> You're on his side. You're I like, mean, that's a perfect icebreaker for two women. I, sure, it's, women. Off, it's offensive if you're a person that likes to be offended, but I don't think you meant anything derogatory by it, right? Uh, he's just a dumb dumb man. He's just a dumb man. I, w- yeah. I would say that, yeah. Yeah, so I would say no. I mean, I could see where some... Personally, I wouldn't. If somebody came up to me and looked and said, what's your favorite cheeseburger? I wouldn't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I've seen myself, I get too. It. You know? Sure. I mean, one of them was wearing a shirt that said Japan on it. <laughs> That's you know, what you get. That's where all the anime comes from. So you you say, no, not offensive. I think it depends on the person, but personally. My, no. my exact reaction was eyes wide, mouth wide. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was my reaction. So did they ever have a conversation with him? Ah, uh, brief. Yeah. Yeah. Did he realize how much of a dumb, dumb son? Doubtful. No. Highly doubtful, yeah. How old was he? Uh, late 20s. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that stinks. It does stink, huh? Yeah. Speaking of offensive, let's do another follow-up. Is it offensive or no? Stephen King had an opinion, which is the worst thing you could possibly have if you're a person. <laughs> so Stephen King had an opinion. Oh, that guy. That guy. I don't Richard know. Richard Bachman. Richard Bachman, yeah. I don't know if you heard of this Stephen King before, Never. but he had an opinion. Which West is a, Coast guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say West Coast guy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the worst thing a person can have these days is one of those opinions. Sure. Well, I mean, they can have an opinion, just don't tell Don't talk us about, about it. it. Right. <laughs> just hold it inside, deep in your thoughts. Yeah. Talk about it to the wall, maybe. Right. Maybe your therapist. Mind your own business. Mind your own fucking business, Steve. That's my motto. Is it? Absolutely. You have a motto now. Oh, it's always been my motto. I doubt that. I just don't much. tell people because mind your own business. <laughs> I'm serious. I see I'm serious, what you did though. there. I, I didn't mean to. GTA Stone I've always Co- been a mind your own business guy. GTA Stone Cold Steve Austin. Don't trust anyone. Yeah. Well, no. Just mind your own business. It ain't about distrust or trust all right just don't get don't involve yourself in things that don't involve you okay all it's right as easy as that well he shoved his his little writerly self into this business so again just to remind you tommy is it offensive or no he posted this on twitter 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 Twitter. This is where you tweet all your twats about all your thoughts. <laughs> I like that. Did you come up with that? Yeah. Right then and right, right now. now. Uh, yeah. You tweet all your that, twats about all your thoughts. You tweet all your twats about all your thoughts. That's what <laughs> happens that. six beers in. Okay. Yeah. Brilliance. That's what happens when Randy has six tall Bud Lights and a shot. Just, I'm Ernest Hemingway over here. <laughs> tweet your twats the Hemingway about of all your podcast thoughts. and twats yeah. over here. This is what he posted on the Twitter. As a writer, he's talking about the Academy Award nominations, which, okay. ha- which happened the other day. Yeah. As a writer, I am allowed to nominate in just three categories. 
Best Picture, Adapted Screenplay, and Best Original Screenplay. For me, the diversity issue, as it applies to individual actors and directors anyways, did not come up. That said... Here's where it gets dicey. Mm -hmm. That said, I would never consider diversity in matters of art, only quality. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. Ah, say that again, the diversity and qualities of art. I will repeat it one more time for all the listeners and Tommy Thompson at home. (laughs) That said, I would never consider diversity in matters of art, only quality. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. So don't consider diversity. So he's saying that if somebody says that that photograph is racist, he's going to look at it just as strictly an artist's point of view. Well, is that right? in this instance... Because I, I would, I would kind of agree with that. It depends okay. on the nature of it. Okay, 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 okay. Depends okay. on the nature. Okay, Tom. Okay, Tommy. Okay, Tommy. Okay, Tommy. What's okay. the message? Okay, 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 okay. Listen. So he's talking about uh, he's allowed to vote in but basically writerly aspects in the Academy Awards. So screenplays, writing. Yeah. And... He says in that instance, he would only look at the screenplay rather than the race or gender of the or sexuality of the person. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Oh, I don't think you can say that in America these days. Well, that's taking all bias out of it, right? Uh, I mean, if you're looking at race and gender and stuff, that would kind of be being racist. And sexist I would say Stephen King You're not so Unless I'm confused right now Well that's highly possible Well you're saying that He doesn't take in If the person's male or female White or black According to this tweet Yeah that's perfect Why wouldn't that, that That would be That would make everybody equal Equality? I mean, are you, uh, am I getting it wrong? Are you disagreeing? Am I saying something terrible right now? Well, I would say, Stephen King, you're not so penny wise now, <laughs> are you? I take that this was the wrong subject to take the stand on, Ooh. Tommy. When clearly many diverse talents are becoming the shining stars of Hollywood. Right, but he's saying that it wouldn't matter to him what race or gender they are. Shut it, you Tommy Knocker. Is that what he's saying? (laughs) Shut it, you Tommy Knocker, before I give you a knuckle sandwich and put you to doctor sleep. I'm going to fucking sick the children of the corn on you, and they're going to turn you into such misery. I I am good. It's going to be terrible. It's, uh... I don't play Gerald's game. <laughs> I will become Gerald's game. That's a new one. I will practice a Russian slap fighter move on you <laughs> so fierce that your face will never recover. Your cheek will be permanently red. You look like Mikhail Gorbachev on that cheek. Listen with to his you little burf, pussy church burf mark. <laughs> Did you just call me pussy church? Yes. What the hell is that? Pet cemetery. Oh, pussy church. The cat was church. Oh, <laughs> did you call me Pussy Church? Yeah. I feel like that should be a rap song somewhere. <laughs> it should be a death metal band name. <laughs> yeah, Pussy Church. I would name the episode that, but I can't because they'll yeah. Kitty Church. kill me. Kitty Church. <laughs> I, if I'm getting this right, if I'm getting this right, he's just saying that he's looking at it just artistically. He's not looking at it. To see what gender is playing what He's not looking at it to see what race is playing what Is that correct? Or did I miss it? Did I miss something? So what I gathered from this tweet Is Will you that you say the tweet one more time? Because I'm an I idiot will. Maybe I'll totally change my mind You are a maroon and a buffoon Both at the same time It's very hard to listen to your voice for long periods No, of- it's very soothing, I yeah. understand it, it gives you all the orgasmic thoughts Sometimes in your mind. I just zone out and, and Why would you it. do that? I, uh-huh. I'm constant brilliance over here uh-huh. As a writer I am allowed to nominate in just three categories Best picture, 
Adapted Screenplay, and Best Original Screenplay. For me, the diversity issue, as it applies to the individual actors and directors anyways, did not come up. Meaning, he don't get to vote on the actors' nominations nor directors. Only the the writing aspect, you see. That said, I would never consider diversity in matters of art only quality. I like that, yeah. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. Absolutely. You should not... No, 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 yeah, yeah, I I agree with them because... You do understand in this day and age that there's going to be a million and five people re- waggling their self-righteous finger of O and O, saying, "Oh, you can't say, oh, you said diversity." There's but wouldn't a- it be wrong to be like, "I'm going to give this award to this guy because he's a white person," just as wrong as it would be like, "I'm going to give this award to this guy because he's a black person." Why wouldn't you take that out? Why wouldn't you just get rid of that and just say, "I'm going to give it to him because he was a good actor." So here's because the pr- it shouldn't fucking matter what if they're male or female. It shouldn't fucking matter what race they are. So it should only matter on their acting quality, right? Like, here's the deal. Here's what I think. Okay. He should have fucking kept his mouth shut. One. Well, I mean, yeah, but yes. Number two, I don't disagree. Number three, if he was giving, gi- giving, if he was giving. God damn it. If he was given, how many Best Picture nominees were there? Like five, eight, I think? Yeah, maybe. If he was given the screenplays to all eight movies that were nominated, we'll say, (laughs) and he was allowed to read them. Yeah. And he had no fucking clue as to if it was a male or female that wrote it or the ethnicity of the person or the racial background or we'll even say the religious background or sexual orientation. You might be missing some stuff. Maybe Is he, that what you're saying? Yeah, he might not catch on some of the nuance. However, I, that. I understand what he's saying in that... He's saying if somebody paints a picture, I don't want to know if it was a white person, black person, male, female, rich, poor. You know, I don't care about that. I just want to examine the picture. Right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying if you... But you're saying that, you know, we might have to know that this person came from a culturally different background than, say, the antagonist and the protagonist were two different types of people. For example, I know that Little Women was nominated for a uh, Best Picture. The thing from the 40s? Well, it was a movie that just came out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't pay attention to women. I I don't know. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Holy shit. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Oh, my God. There it is. There, I'm canceled. Tommy's canceled. Uh, cancel culture has captured Tommy. They're not going to point the part out where I said I was just joking. Nope. You've, been a, you've become a soundbite. <laughs> Thank you very much for the publicity. Thank you for the downloads, all you SJWs. Well, that's just terrible, even if he was kidding. Yeah, I don't, I don't appreciate <laughs> just kidding. Just you joking. can't include JKs and make it okay. Right, right. God damn it. I just had a thought. You keep talking, so shut up. It was very funny, too. God damn <laughs> I'm it. sure it was. it was. It was something about the JK thing. thing the JK is, Rollins? Oh, God damn it. Yeah, how about that J.K. Rollins? Is she <laughs> just kidding, Rollins? I've never, never read anything or seen the movies. No, oh, I've never seen a Harry Potter. Which is funny because we're very off the subject and we need to get back to it. <laughs> However, dear listener, you should know in Michigan, there's... Around the world, there's a few seasons. There's four. There's yeah. spring, summer, fall, and winter. But in Michigan, there's an added incentive season. It's called Daniel Radcliffe season. This is a season where Daniel Radcliffe comes to town yeah, and he's he spotted shows up. at fucking Denny's or yeah. the neighborhood porch and people go or nuts. t-shirt yeah. shops. It, it, it was funny because in the in the in the uh, '90s it was Bud Bundy. Do you remember that? 
I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, no. Bud Bunny was dating a girl from the uh, from Flushing. Oh, nice. Which is a town just uh, outside of Flint. Yes. And so, like the late '90s, early 2000s, it was sightings of Bud Bundy. Yeah. From Married with Children. So Daniel, which I can't even remember his real name now. Daniel Radcliffe. His girlfriend actually went to school with us at the University of Michigan Flint. Neither of us knew her. Right, but you said she was in the acting program. She was in the theater program. That's a whole. She's an actress herself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And her family still lives in Flint, Michigan. And my one of my Facebook friends actually got a picture taken with Daniel Radcliffe, who is whose girlfriend's parents live like. The next house over or whatever. He's just hanging out on their front stoop, to, yeah. just hanging out with them and taking pictures. Whenever Harry he's on around, a Sunday, huh? Yeah, what? Harry on a Sunday. Yeah, wh- wherever he's around, he takes pictures with everyone. And I want to meet Daniel Radcliffe because I yeah. think he'd be cool. Why not? Yeah, right? why not? He was be in like, your one of your favorite movies, The Horns or whatever. Horns, yeah, yeah. I I do like it. I like the book Horns by Joe Hill. Speaking of Stephen King, why is it? That? Oh, that's that's uh, Stephen King's son. Yeah, yeah. yeah Way yeah. to bring him back around. I I like the book Horns more than I do the uh, the, the, movie the movie adaptation. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I like the. Was re- that because you found out it was a white male that was playing the part? <laughs> no. <laughs> See what I did there? I don't know what you're doing. I'm, I'm saying that Stephen King would want to vote for something I, that has no bias. There's if you, nothing wrong with that. If, you, if I'm wrong on my thoughts. I, I, like I said, I understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to understand that. I'm scared to understand why somebody would think that would be a wrong thing because maybe I'm missing something. Uh... People think it's the wrong thing but because it's cool to jump on fucking anything these days. That but might. why wouldn't you want to judge something without any bias? Why would you want to have bias on something? Uh, the, yeah, exactly. I mean, I understand that, like, you want to get into it and you want to kind of... It does make a difference if, you know, you can't be like, well, this ma- uh, how's this dude having an abortion? Well, you know, then you kind of, sure. you know, like I said, on your own. You're, you're missing, like, some of the nuance... A little the bit bullshit, you mean? No, like if for example, what's a Spike Lee movie you've seen? Sure, right. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah, for example, the do the right, right thing. Yeah, do the right thing. Yeah, if Boys you found in the Hood is not a Spike Lee joint. I'm sorry. Boys in the Hood's a good example too. That's John Singleton. Yeah. So if you found out that John Singleton was a, a white homosexual female that might be a little bit different experience for some people. But if he didn't know that going in, it wouldn't be. Then that's what Stephen King's saying. Exactly. That's why I if, think he's if you right. T- if, if you take away, if you go into it completely blind. And that's what he's saying, right? That That's, that's what he's saying, but I don't know how you go into it completely blind. Right. It's like kinda, maybe it's possible. Right. I, maybe you don't know the specific race or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but Race, certainly gender. you'll know gender. Yeah, yeah. For the You've, most well, part, I think I think I think King probably assumes that people will figure it out as they go. Yes, yeah. my my deal is I get where he's coming from, but he should have kept his fucking mouth shut. Uh, yeah, you can't. I mean, well, so should I have, right? <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, I know I'm. Whoa, shit! One, There's a train we're gonna run into. Yeah, for real. So we're stopped at a train track right now. I don't know if you know this about us, but we're That's on the road. Crazy. That's crazy that there's a train. Well, I mean, I'm not used to a train. All right. You're not used to a train going by. There's a train right there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Tommy is currently evacuating the vehicle while a train goes by and he's peeing in a ditch. And I will not edit this. Uh, the train is... Can you hear the sound of the train going by so slow? Can you hear that? Tommy's outside of the window right now peeing. I'm sure you can hear that train. I hear the train a-coming. Coming around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine and... I don't know when I come from frozen prison. It's too late. I can't. 
I can't sing all the Johnny Cash tunes songs here. <laughs> Are you adjusted now? What's my microphone? What's right here? Everybody knows you were peeing right now, <laughs> by the way. Good idea to go. Uh, if you gotta go, you gotta go. Rather, around. rather in the out of doors than your precious empowerment jeans. Well, there was literally nobody around. Well, the the fucking conductor was blowing his horn. <laughs> he liked what he saw. Oh sure. Everybody heard it too. They were like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" He's really honking that horn there. <laughs> Yeah, it's just crazy to see. I don't know if I've ever stopped at a track that doesn't have the uh, the guards, you know? Oh, that's what you need? Well, I mean... The red lights are not enough? Or just in the middle of nowhere, you know? We are. Boy, I hope that car behind us wasn't there the whole time watching no, the urinate. No, no, no. There okay. was nobody around. I thought it's not. I but guarantee. It's better, you know, that way. That nobody has a spotlight on okay. your dick? I agree. <laughs> Quality question, Tommy. I saw this on the, the Twitter.com. This is another segment we do uh, occasionally. Quality question. I thought this applied to you rather valiantly. Mm-hmm. Appropriately. Okay. Tommy, would you go to battle using only items tattooed on your body? <laughs> would you do this? Well, I have garlic. I have a knife. Yes. If you're going into battle against supernatural beings, like I assume I that... skulls. You do I have, have skulls. ghosts. You have a haunted house. Yeah. Is that like a Ghostbuster trap, sure. maybe? I have fire. You've got fire? I have maggots. <laughs> You've got ma- He's going to throw some maggots at some punk mark busters. And most of all, I have a heart. Oh, isn't it a vampire heart or something? Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't die. What a fucked up human being you are. It's like I, it's like I got my tattoos thinking about going into battle. What kind of Edgar Allan Poe did you bow and poem arrow? come? Did you come? Whoa! What kind of Edgar Allan Poe poem did you come from? <laughs> I don't know. I got a bow and arrow. What I kind got, of Edgar Allan Poe? I got poem? a dog. You got you got, got a, a dead dog. You got, got a lot. zombie dog in your arm for I Christ's got sake! A lot of shit that will fuck people up in battle. I got lyrics. You got? I got the empowerment lyrics that will give me courage and valor. Was it your was it your uh, girlfriend wondering about my lyrics? My gal, yeah. Your gal? Did you tell her my lyrics? Uh she listens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. She listens. I'm not used to people listening. People do listen. <laughs> Need I remind you that we were number twenty, whatever, on the twenty four. Yeah. yeah, it means yeah. nothing to you, but, and it blows my oh, mind. Oh, but who forgot? You did. No, I just I just told you. Okay, I'm just testing your knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, we were at a Tommy comedy show tonight. Oh yeah, that was a that was a good one, huh? I can't wait until I have like secret agents in all corner <laughs> of the universe to spy on people for me. Like I need to be Big Brother and watch all these people because I get endless entertainment out of everything. Yeah. Holy poop! Do you want? Take the lead, Tommy. All right, I was I I do a show once a month at Sorry Eagle. Um, Casino in Mount Pleasant. Uh, I MC the show. They pay me really well to MC the show. I mean, they you know, uh, it's not normal MC wages, so I do it, and then they 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 give me food and stuff, and it's only You're like an hour from my an MC Hammer. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I usually don't MC anymore. I usually feature a headline, and this is my insecurities talking, I guess. But uh, you're pretty much the cock of the whack. But it's fun to do these shows. Like tonight, uh, I got to uh, I had to MC, and then like my my buddy Andy Benengo was the feature, who's usually a headliner. And then uh, Kira Sultanovic was the headliner, and I never met Kira before, and she was funny. She was super funny. Yeah. Yeah. And so Andy did great too. Andy is always funny. Um, but yeah, I never met Kara before, and she did a lot of crowd work. And she was, uh, yeah. I walked up to her and uh, before the show. And I said, hey, Kara, I'm Tommy. I'm your MC tonight, and I need to know how to uh, bring you up on stage. So, uh, Kara, how do you say your last name? And she says, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know. Yeah. Of course she says that to everybody, but it was funny, right? And then you go on stage, and you said her last name perfectly, and then you called her Kara. So <laughs> The it, first time. 
the yeah, first that was, time. that was before I talked to her, though. That was before I talked to her. Uh, no, I talked to her when Andy was on stage. Oh, because I, okay. I couldn't find her before. Oh yeah, that's right. You're really okay. Yeah. I couldn't find her before that's I actually true. went up. And did. Although beforehand, I said her name was Kira. Yeah, and I knew it was Kira. I don't know. Yeah, why I said you said Kira. Kira. I mean, yeah. shit happens when you're on stage. It just happens. Shit happens. It was when you're on one stage. one con- or one vowel. Make that make that a t-shirt. So shit happens call, when you're on stage. I'm gonna call you Rondi. Uh, people do. Or Rindy. No, people call me Rondi because yeah. they can't pronounce Randy for some reason. Right. It's above their affluent <laughs> pronunciation level. Rundy. Rundy. When you're above a certain wealth level, you can't say ah sounds. It yeah. comes out raw sound. I agree with that. I'm, yeah. I'm there. I know. If you're super wealthy, it comes out rundy. That's how I say it. Not Randy. Yeah. I mean, all I need is a simple ah, and I get an <laughs> ah. So you had a waiter friend. The dude with the long ponytail? Yes. The guy that was 120 pounds, but he was wearing a triple X. <laughs> dress shirt tucked into his pants that were sagged around his knees. That guy. <laughs> okay. Is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, yeah. so during the show, Kira, not Kara, at one point pointed out she asked people in the crowd if they were from another country, if they're immigrants, because she is an immigrant. Yeah, she she's is from yeah. the Ukraine, and uh, there was this girl that was. Kitty Corner. Is that okay to say, people? Can I say <laughs> Kitty Corner? Is I that so. PC okay? Yeah. So I, she was Kitty Corner from me, and boy, was she fucking hot. Can I say that? Is that PC? That's the girl you're talking about that's from, uh, you said she was from Paris or something. I, I did I, not say that. No. Pay attention to the story that I'm about okay. to tell. Because I don't listen to you. Okay. You should, because I'm brilliant. I don't know why this guy's on my ass and won't pass me. There he is. There he is. Oh, there's a a homeboy behind him, too. Yeah. Oh, drive a white car. How's that suiting you, you piece of shit? I was going 61 in a 55, and he was on my ass. I'm like, I'm not going any further. I don't understand why why people are allowed to have cars. (laughs) <laughs> Tell me why people are allowed to drive Look at cars. This guy behind me too. I'm I, and my crew said at sixty two, and this guy's on my butt. I'm like, I, sorry. I can't I'm believe not, I'm doing sixty two and a fifty five. You tell me why I every, can't afford anything more than that. You tell me why everyday people are allowed to drive because that's ridiculous to me. Yeah. I. It, I always thought it was ridiculous on that plentyoffish dot com that one of the fucking questions was. Do you have a car, yes or no? I'm like, <laughs> everybody has a car. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Not everybody does have a car. It just seems oh, that way. <laughs> oh, contraire. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Not everybody. Here's my deal. I used to think everybody had a car. Now I think not everybody needs a car oh, because yeah, people are way. fucking stupid. Yes, sir. If I could be driving a hundred. Say it again for the people in the back, Randy. Not everybody <laughs> needs a car. All right. Did you hear that back yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Excellent. you got it. So I could be driving 155 miles per hour. Potentially, yeah. Potentially in a 55 zone. And some motherfucker would want to drive 160 miles per hour, sure. guaranteed. Like Doesn't matter that? what you're driving. Like, what are you in a hurry to get to? Yeah. It's like fucking 1102 on a Wednesday night. Where do you got to be? Yeah, look Nowhere. At behind me. Like, what are you doing, dude? Back off. I'm doing 62. Enjoy your fucking ride, brother. All right. All right. God, I hate people. Yep. Jesus Christ. Here comes a dude on a motorcycle. Oh, it's no, a lot they, uh, So <laughs> long ago, I don't remember yeah. when. Yeah. So when they say I lost my only friend. Yes. A guy that is. I love Jacob Dylan a thousand times more than I loved his dad. Don't be smirch Robert Zimmerman ever. Uh, so, anyways, so Kira, not Kara, asked the question immigrants, what, what? And so the honey that I was looking at all night. And look, look, I have a gal. She knows that 
some she girls are attractive out in the world. Uh, she knows that you're kind of a voyeur. I'm a scallywag and a scoundrel. It's true. <laughs> she knows. So this beautiful lass, she goes, and like I, I'll, I still, I still have no idea who you're talking about. By I the way, you, her you, out, you kept, but I don't. I don't know. There was like a Bob Seger guy sitting on <laughs> one side. There was a girl in white. Was she in white? Yeah, she was in white. Okay, and well, that's she okay. was the angel in white. Tommy. She was the angel. In, yeah, yeah. I yeah. noticed a lady in white. Okay. See, that's that's you know when you're in love, that's how you really look at people. Oh, poop! You just look at their attributes that are non-sexual. <laughs> oh, you just look at their. <laughs> you just decide. If they have no no parts or no, <laughs> you just look at them like Stephen King looks at a screenplay. <laughs> just completely neutral. Hey, yeah. Ah, oh, perfect. Well, you know I was asexual before. I yeah, the, you're still you know. asexual. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I don't. You know, I, yeah, do- I've never been one of. Well, oh, that is a handsome man, or that is a beautiful woman. Yeah, I've just never. I don't know. Although you have been one that says, "Oh, that's a sexy beer." So yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. When it comes to yeast. alcohol, has been your mis- <laughs> mistress all along. Yeast and hops. Yeah. Oh, give me that fucking hops, girl. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you were your... you were befuddled by the beer that I was drinking tonight. Norm's raggedy ass. I... Norm's raggedy ass is what Tommy was oh, that's drinking. Great. What a real thing that somebody puts I in their body. It. Norm's raggedy ass. I Tommy was eating Norm's raggedy ass. Yeah, and you're just sucking down that shitty water, Bud Light. I'm all right with it. Look at this guy. This fucking butt. guy. We're tr- oh, trying to be this. funny okay. with a okay, podcast. I'm going down. Yeah, good. Do it because he could have passed. Drop me. down. What your move, homie? Look, I went from 62. Now I'm at 50. Yeah. He's what's got to get the message? What's up, white lights? He's still not passing me. No. You got Dude. clear sailing, brother. What in the hell is going on? I can't get down to 30, can I? I don't know. Uh oh. He's making his move, I think. Nope. Nope. Not going to happen. What is he doing? He's he's scared. <laughs> I went from 62 to 41, and he didn't pass Still me. Still there? No cars the other way. No. Nope. Uh, he's got those angry Spider-Man those eyes. He have those fucking pissed off truck lights. Yeah, he's got those angry Spider-Man eyes for headlights. They're, yeah, like, least, curved and white. He says... I can now he's way up. back. Yeah. What? I got the method. So anyways, I, I see this gorgeous woman. She's with this goddamn kid with fucking bangs. I did see that guy come up. Now, he was with her before or after because you just lost it when that kid came up. Both. They were together? They, were, oh. they arrived and left together. Oh. They're, they're clearly like something. I don't know. Okay. Friends, maybe. Okay. But he... All throughout the show, she was laughing, and he was, like, blank face, like he had no fucking clue, which isn't a shock to me because, first of all, he had a goddamn friendship bracelet on his, his <laughs> wrist. You really check these people out. Oh, I, I, I drink in every detail. I don't leave anything to chance. Um, so Kira on stage asks if anyone was an immigrant, and uh, this beautiful lass, this model-esque Where beauty. Where was I during this? I don't know. Maybe talking to Andy. Networking. Yeah, I was probably talking to Andy. This model-esque beauty says, I'm from Rome, Italy. Oh, that's what it was. Holy shit. And then I heard the accent and everything. I'm like, look at this it, Italian beauty over here. <laughs> what cares say about that? I don't remember. Yeah. I was too focused on... And I'm like, oh my God. Starstruck by the Coliseum. I was. I'm like, this fucking girl... <laughs> From goddamn Rome, one of the oldest cities in the history of the fucking civilized world, is all the way over here in goddamn Podunk, Michigan, going to Central Michigan University, and she hooked up with a boy with bangs. <laughs> what the fuck? And this kid is for all the way from goddamn Ortonville, Michigan, where they have a real life, I shit you not, 
pet cemetery. I've seen it with my own two blue eyes. A pet cemetery with a goddamn thing that says pet cemetery and goddamn headstones at every gravesite too. That's what they have in Ortonville, Michigan with his friendship bracelet. This chick from the goddamn Parthenon in Vatican City is hanging out with her model-esque beauty with a goddamn boy from 1992 and his The Cure Bangs from Ortonville, Michigan, where they still bury rabbits and give them headstones for Mr. Bun Bun. Joey? Caleb. Ah, Fuck Caleb. You're going young. Okay. God damn it. Randy, I have a thing that uh, will help you um, enjoy life more. Oh, I enjoy all it's of them. It's from life. 1940s. It's a <laughs> song by Hank Williams, and it goes, Mind your own business. That's not from 1940s. Why don't you mind your own business? I can't help myself. Well, if you mind your own business, then you won't be mine and mine. I'll tell you why I can't mind my own business. 50s, then. Fine. When did, it's when, 50s. When, yeah, when did he die? Okay. You know, get a goddamn clue if you're going to prove me wrong. 40s, 50s, whatever. Research your facts before you think you're going to trump me. <laughs> and I don't mean in the Donald way. I mean the Euchre you. way. I was just pointing out that if you didn't let other people bother you, you wouldn't have such a rough oh, life. They don't bother me. Oh, you were pretty upset. Oh, uh, listen. I love... More than anything else, the art of people watching. Yeah. If people watching dot TV was a thing, I'd watch that every day. <laughs> that would be Candid the camera. That would be the ultimate reality show. I say, put a goddamn trail cam in every <laughs> grocery store in America. That's better than any wildlife you see out there in the forest. You see the wildlife out there in the grocery stores. They're I, all savage animals. I love it when you're in Target and you look up and it says you're on camera. Yeah. And I'm like, should I do a jig? Oh, I always do. Is this I my big dance shot? a little bit. And, I mean, what? You got to, right? Somebody's got to be watching that somewhere, right? You never I mean, know who the next producer is going <laughs> to. Well, I mean, I just imagine some security guard, like, half falling asleep. And then he sees some guy, like, doing jazz hands in a circle. Well, you're a real Imagine Dragon, then. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I just made that guy's night a little funny, I think. I mean, when you used to walk into that fucking Amber Crombie and Fitch store, or that uh, Hollister's... Never. Well, is that the one with the fucking porch they used to have? I don't remember. I hated Amber Crombie. Or was it Hollister? Hollister had the porch. Uh, Hollister had the porch. It looked like you're walking into like a like a movie theater or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I walked in there a couple times with my younger, I don't know, yeah. thought he was cooler cousin, and uh, <laughs> Scott or Paul. No, neither. Oh, <laughs> why would you turn that on right now? Because I need. Uh, okay, well, it's... wait a minute. So you walk into these stores, and uh, it's bad enough they got a. Oh, front porch right. on there like you're at a campground or something and you walk in and it's pitch fucking black and they got yeah. black lights. That's it. Yeah, that's Hollister. Yeah. Also on the side of the wall, they have a beach cam that's taking a, a live stream of some I don't know, unmarked beach somewhere in America <laughs> where people are just strolling around. Yeah. Obviously not here in Flint. No. That's what I want in my everyday life. That camera in all the grocery stores in America. It's kind of like live PD, but people acting a fool in everyday situations. That's sure. what I want. Right, right. People losing their goddamn minds over a loaf of bread. I can see that, yeah. Oh, I can see it. I want to see it, and I should see it. That's what we need. <laughs> so... I'm sorry, Caleb, but I disapprove of everything you stand for. By the way, that Rome, Italy chick, I'm going to pretend her name is Francesca. She's too good for you, and she will realize it soon. Because, by the way, you have fucking bangs. <laughs> so. Yeah, that really bothers you, huh? Actually, what really bothers me is the goddamn friendship bracelet he was wearing because he's <laughs> in college. You fucking dweeb. What are you How do you wearing? Know up? It was a friendship. Bracelet. It was a yarn bracelet with beads on it. Get a goddamn <laughs> room, and realize that you are out of line. I need you to sit in solitude and ponder your life choices. 
that was a bad idea. You're taking that girl out in public on a supposed date wearing that on your wrist. You're not cool. I hate you. You're welcome. But Francesca, maybe that's cool in Rome, Italy. I I can't believe that would be true. She's like, you're wearing a French bracelet. Yeah, that's... Otherwise, she's Ukrainian, but... Yeah, that's not how they talk. How do they talk over there? I don't know how Italians talk. I will tell you how Francesca talks. It's a me, Mario! (laughs) I'm going to win. That was close. Yeah, Yeah. that's how she sounded. So she's Princess Toadstool. She's more Mario than Prince. <laughs> she didn't. She's she's gorgeous. Like, hey girl, hey, but uh, bangs stop. <laughs> Meanwhile, the whole night you had a, a a waiter friend that was trying to get in your pants. I don't know. It's just <laughs> we were sitting there. We're sitting there, and Polly Walnuts is with us, and uh, this waiter. And if you guys don't know Polly Walnuts, he's an old friend of the show, and he's been on, and yeah. Randy's cousin, and uh, he uh, he's uh, Professor Paul. He's a professor up at the university, up where this uh, this uh, casino show I was doing tonight is. But I uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Exactly. And, uh, I like that. Good so, job. Thank you. And so me and Randy and Paul are sitting at the edge of the uh, one of the bars there in the in the showroom, and and here comes this uh, one hundred and ten pounds maybe probably Native American I think. Oh, I don't know. I'm so not gonna you know, maybe I don't know. Yeah, we'll do the Stephen King. Yeah, thing. slow down, Steve. Uh, yeah, and I'm just trying to get you know like he's a ponytail. He's got a ponytail. He's wearing a shirt that's probably a triple X. Yeah, uh, and jeans that probably were uh, buckled around his knees. And by the way, he's strutting around that place like he owns the universe, and everything you think you own, he actually owns. That's the strut he's he's oh, rocking. Yeah. He, he Holy was, poop. He was pimping with Deline. Oh, God damn. I if mean, anybody he, ever had a strut. He was laid back. There's a band called The Struts? Oh, hell no. This was The Struts. This dude's shoulders went boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it was like left, right. You know, and he was leaning back. He had that lean, pimping with the lean, man. Pimping with the lean, man. And every time he just popped up out of nowhere <laughs> and he'd say something like, So I was eating this bitch out. And she was like, Chef Boy RD. <laughs> and I'm like, What? She told me a v- <laughs> she told me she was a vegan. I was like, Here's some ranch stressing, bitch. Yeah, yeah, that was one. And then he disappears again. Yeah, he's like a Muppet. He's just <laughs> randomly gone, and then all of a sudden... And he doesn't say, hey, 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 or anything. No. He, he just, just starts. Yeah, he just starts. Yeah. He's confident he should get on stage. He's like, hey, they should call they should call a clarinet a butthole. Yeah. Because they both whistle. That was a good one. I laughed really hard at that. I don't know if it makes sense, but I did laugh really hard. That's a real life honest joke that somebody in real life told us. Yeah. Out of the blue spontaneously. During a comedy show. It while a comedy show is going on, on stage, yes. It works. And there. so I'm not sure if it's actually a funny joke or it's just a funny situation. Oh yeah. However, I dare to tell you if that happened to you uh, in real life, spontaneously, out of the blue, you'd probably laugh your F and A off. Yeah, because he's just standing there, and it's like, you know, you, you hear him before you see him. Yeah. <laughs> all, <laughs> all you see is this b- blade of grass standing there. He's so <laughs> thin. Like, like a wavy blade yeah, of grass. Yeah, it's, it's just... Wisp- he's, he's like Shaggy in a dress shirt yeah. and, and a ponytail. It's just willowing in the wind there. It's just... Woo. Yeah. And it's got this fucking ponytail. Yeah, I just remember one of his punchlines was, I was like, Chef Boyardee, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I, I missed at one point, he took somebody to some table and Kira was on stage and he comes back and, like, I don't even realize that I acknowledged him very much, but he had to tell me that he almost corrected her punchline. I'm like, yeah, you oh, should have. He, he told you this? Yeah. Oh, I missed this. I don't remember what he was going to say or whatever, but I'm like, yeah, you should have said that. And I, 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 I'm I, serious. He should have just for the pure comedic right. oh, yeah. enjoyment I, absolutely. of me. 
I would have loved that so much. You know, because he's just in his own head, and he's just, he's, I don't know why he's telling me, I guess because I was on stage, but. You got the power, brah. I guess so. You were the MC Hammer of the night. Tony, he went to like some 19 year old bar where like, you know, 19 year old kids hang out. <laughs> it's like, yo, I made the other comedians laugh tonight. He's straight up killing the game. Yeah, he thought he was. That's for damn sure. He is slaying it. Slenderman, that's what I call him. He is Slenderman. Oh, boy. What else do we got? I don't know. A long episode. It might be a long episode. Maybe I'll split it in two. Maybe I won't. Who knows? Who can tell? I don't know. Maybe we should wrap it up. But before I do, I'm going to say head on over to that Apple podcast and uh, maybe subscribe to someone's favorite movie in which I and sometimes Tommy, sometimes I pal Tom K. Tom K. Tuesdays. Exactly. From Jake and Tom Conquer the World. Talk about uh, underappreciated cinematic treasures or maybe they're just the worst. Who can tell? We will tell you. Um, it's a movie about movie. It's, woof. it's a podcast <laughs> about movies. <laughs> It's a movie about movies. Yeah, it's a podcast about movies. And uh, if you're a big-time movie lover, you'll probably enjoy it because big-time movie lovers even like the stupid movies. Sometimes they're stupid. Sometimes they're good. I don't know. Sometimes they're stupid good. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's great to watch a bad movie. Like joysticks, exactly. Also... A big, huge fucking news. Oh, boy. Coming up in May. I don't even know. Oh, the epic film guys. May 28th. May. May 28th. Live stream for The Cure for Miserable Retail Slave will be on from 7 to 8 p.m. on May 28th. This is a Thursday. Mark your calendars. What's their goal this year? Do they know? They're... So last year, all told, we raised close to, I think it was sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000. amazing. Uh, this year, so every year they uh, they find uh, uh, some place to match or double the, the uh, contributions. So last time the total was like, I think they wanted to get 8000 in donations, and then they found a company that would double that. Yeah. So we got sixteen, seventeen. This year, I think the goal is ten thousand in donations, and oh, yeah. the doubling would be twenty thousand, nice. which would be fucking amazing. And it goes straight to cancer research. It goes straight to cancer yeah. research. We've That's done Nick and Justin from the Epic Film from guys. the Epic Film guys. This will be our third year in the road. Do third year in a row doing it. Yeah, and Dan Dan the Mattress Man. Dan Dan the Mattress Man will be in the the uh, green room, making sure all the shit goes off without a hitch. Yeah. So, um, May 28th, mark it on your calendars. Miserable Retail Slave will be there 7 to 8 p.m. We're going to be hilarious. We're going to be a lot better than last year. I feel like last year we kind of dropped the ball <laughs> a little bit. Randy was going on a date last year, and he was nervous, and he wouldn't let it, He wouldn't let me and Dan razz him about it. It was a big, huge deal. It was a to-do. It was a to-do, to and also we I geared it towards, like, well, this will be a choose-your-own-adventure thing, and the donations, well, nobody fucking cared, so that was a thing. Except we, for your date. Well, yeah, we we got plenty of your date chimed in. <laughs> we, yeah, exactly. We got plenty of donations. We got like I don't know, yeah, five, six, seven hundred dollars worth yeah, of donations during our segment. Yeah, we good to come back on. Sure, <laughs> we're making our uh, third appearance. Yes, I mean, the so thrice time. We're gonna be so hilarious this year. You're gonna laugh your f and a off. Yeah. And it's going to be great, and it's all for a good cause. So yes. mark it on your calendar. Yeah. Head on over and give the Epic Film Guys a, a like or a retweet or something. Yeah, give them all those things on those medias. <laughs> if you haven't already, tell a friend to listen. Join our Facebook group. We met Victor today. He joined our Facebook yeah. group. Yeah, you know I Victor. I haven't seen Victor in a while. I was very happy that he came out. Huh? New listener to the podcast. God bless you, sir. Yeah, I wish we I could have hung out longer, but I have to work in the morning. And uh, and uh, Victor's living in Tawas, Michigan, which uh, 
Akira, the headliner, she had a blast with that. She was calling it Tawalasi, and you know, because mm-hmm. when you're not from there, it's kind of a weird name, right? And, yeah, and uh, him and his GF live like an hour and a half away, time and distance. Oh, right. I'm no stranger to that, brother. <laughs> no well, stranger. February eighth, I'm uh, um, actually uh, performing at the Knights of Columbus Hall in Tawa. So look out. Hey. Else. Hey Vic, why don't you stop out out then? Yeah, it's yeah, right in your neck of the him, woods. Yeah, and get to see me do a little longer set, and I'm there with a, a veteran of stand-up comedy named a Bill. Hill veteran? So. Aren't you a veteran at this point? Oh God, I mean, maybe technically, but I hope not. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe I should be, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, as you know, a veteran is somebody you want to look to for experience. What are you, a goddamn journeyman? Yeah, you apprentice. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was just God gonna say, I'm still it. my, I'm still my apprenticeship. Poop. You're still on knock knock yeah. jokes, aren't you? I still can't get out of that. Yeah, I gotta. Uh, why did the chicken cross the road, huh? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you're just you're just ready for it to fall apart any second. Yeah, I'm just you waiting know, like, for so the currently at eleven uh, fourteen p.m. That's a phrase, right? I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. People say yeah. that, and I don't know <laughs> what that means, but I don't know. Is, is it the shoe to drop? Is shoe, that what they say? Shoes are dropping. Where are you driving to? My house. I'm just gonna bypass oh. downtown. Okay, good call. Yeah. The, it's funny to me because there's another phrase. Well, I, I so the, I listened to a podcast the yesterday. Actually, I went to this training and I had to drive, and I was listening to this podcast. I saw it on Twitter. I thought it'd be interesting. It's called Origin of the Speakies. Oh, I like that. So they take a look at, and I'm fascinated with this. You know this, listeners. Uh They take a look at, like, old idioms and sayings and cliches. So the the last episode I looked at or listened to was about the phrase, I heard it through the grapevine. Oh. So I found it very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, honey. And, of course, I thought of the California raisins. They thought of the California raisins. raisins. So... um, (laughs) What was it originally? Was it was Marvin Gaye? No, yeah, yeah, Marvin Gaye. You're right, Marvin yeah. Gaye. Yeah. Or was it the Temptations? Now that you said that, oh, oh shit. shit! No, I think you're right. I think I, it was Marvin. Marvin Gaye has a version. I know that. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Anyways, so the, <laughs> it wasn't the raisins. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Not originally. Walking, talking raisins. I, I they did guarantee. The version. They did the best version. They had the sunglasses on and everything. Oh, they were so cool. That was the, oh, they were the coolest thing that 1988 could have ever thought of. Yeah. My gay best friend had all the two, <laughs> had all the Mike. Yeah. They had he had all the goddamn toys from Hardee's. Uh-huh. They were giving them away at Hardee's when you got a goddamn meal and he had them all. Like he'd go to Hardee's or somebody worked Maybe Is his aunt worked at Hardee's. Hardee's. Where was there even a Hardee's growing up? In Clio, Michigan, USA. Where was it? Flint, Michigan, USA. Where was the Hardee's in Clio? Who cares? Yeah. Listen to me. He had I all of the Clio. California raisins. There wasn't a Hardee's in Clio. I will give you a Hardee's right here, <laughs> right betwixt your eyes. He had all of them. I had like one of them. Uh, was, Andy. I, yeah. Did you even know which one you had? I know. I think it had sunglasses, <laughs> but didn't they all? God damn it! Anyways, it was very good. You should listen to that podcast. I enjoyed it a lot. What podcast was it? Origin of the Speakies. Okay. Instead of species, speak sees. I get it. Get it? Yeah. Got it. Good. And they were funny and everything. There's a K in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, I, I that got me thinking about the phrase the last. I want. Have you ever heard this? I want to get with him if he was the last man on earth. Yeah, it's like yeah, you would. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. If you had to, you had to uh, save the world, uh huh, you'd just be like, no, let's just die. Maybe. I mean, I guess it's a lot of work, right? Then you got to raise the kid. That's not the angle and I'm going to. You think you have another one that's like incest, and that's just weird. <laughs> So I view it this way. <laughs> oh, that's not the way. Okay. I view it this way. So I work in retail. <laughs> Go on there. Get with your sister. Go on. Yeah. 
You, Go on. You're getting real gross, and I'm, it's creeping me out. <laughs> so, uh, at the retail paradise that, that gainfully employs me, when uh, there's like one thing on the shelf, okay. one thing there, inevitably, it doesn't matter what the thing on the shelf looks like. It could be a piece of, it could be an apple plucked from the Garden of Eden. This could be taken from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay. It could be the greatest thing that's ever been created on the history of the earth. It could be sitting there glistening, glowing, majestic. Yeah. Inevitably, do you have any more in the back? Yeah, right. You could have a fucking lump of rotting oranges there. And people will eat them. They'll just grab them up like they're well, goddamn they're free. To, right? That's what they're there for. However, if there's one perfect thing, you got more in the back. Well, what is that? If you think we have more in the back when they were replacing those ugly asses. What is that? There's one perfect thing there, and it's what you've been looking for. It's what you really want, but you won't grab it. You want more quantity. Sure. I don't understand. So what do you mean you don't understand that? People want the best always. It's it's I mean it's dumb. I get it. Thank you. So that's my point. It's annoying. Just take what's there. If somebody says to you, I wouldn't fuck him if he was the last man on earth. It's not a cut down. People are just fucking weird. (laughs) They just want all the quantity. That's why online dating is such a fucking fiasco. Because they just want all the quantity. They can't settle on the one perfect thing. That's why. In a nutshell. So if if somebody says, I want to fuck you if you're the last person on earth, you're probably perfect. You're plucked from the Garden of Eden, brother. And I know you're perfect because you're listening right now, and we thank you so much for that. And guess what? We'll see you next time. Tell a friend to listen. Bye-bye. Bye.